Okay, now uh, let us try to prove B implies C. This is a bit involved, but let us see if we can uh, argue this. What we want now is suppose we assume this B, then I want to show that for any tau, n tau is the Poisson distributed with rate tau lambda, and further the conditional joint distribution of my count times is expressed in this format. Okay. So, now let us first focus on what does this event mean. So, given tau n tau equals to n means by the time tau n counts have happened, right? That means n tau equals to n means exactly n count might have happened before time t and n plus 1th count should have happened after tau. Then that, that is when I am going to call n tau equals to n, right? So, that is what I am writing here. So, that means like if I am going to look at my n of this random variable, T1 all the way up to Tn plus 1. It should be such that if you are going to look at the realization, T1, T2 all the way up to Tn should that is the times of this counts should have happened before or at least by the time tau including tau and the T plus 1th count time should have happened after tau this happens, when this happens that is what you are going to call n tau equals to n, right? If, if this t plus n has happened before tau, that means n plus count is al already happened before, before time tau, right? So, that is why I have to, to express this completely, I also have to include this t n plus 1. Suppose, I just say this and uh, leave it like this. It is not clear that this is going to capture this because I have not told you whether the t n plus 1th count has happened before tau or not. If that has happened before tau, then this is not correct. So, for this to make sure I have to, I have to explicitly say that the n plus 1th count happened after tau. Okay. Now, let us try to find out the conditional So, how I am going to obtain this? I want to find conditional PDF of this set of random variables given n tau equals to n. So, how I am going to leverage already the things that I know? I know that if you just forget the conditional part, the joint distribution of this n random variables, I have already computed it, right? I have this distribution. Okay. But now, I have this conditioning here. What does this conditioning will imply to me? 
So, because of this conditioning, if you go back and recall our conditional density property because of this conditional link, I will get an extra term which divides this PDF here. This, this probability is the one which divides over. So, let me make that clear here. So, if I want to So, I am just uh, trying to use uh, the definition of my conditional probability that we have defined earlier. So, because of this conditioning, this extra probability is, uh, is showing up here in the denominator. Now, if you just apply this definition here, what I will have is this is nothing but lambda to the power. Now, n is going to be replaced by what? In this formula. So, I have to use that formula here, I have to replace n with n plus 1 and then what e to the power lambda times T n is going to be replaced by T n plus 1 right because I am looking at the T n plus 1 here and then this term is there. And this is for the case where my T1 is greater than equals to T2 and this Tn and then this is equals to tau and this is equals to Tn plus 1 here and this is going to be 0 otherwise. Yeah, see that uh, you when I adapted this formula from here to this case, that ordering earlier the ordering did not include any tau here, right? It was just T1, T2, all the way up to Tn uh, arranged in strictly increasing order. But now that I have this tau factor here, so this joint PDF is defined on this on this T such that this T's are strictly increasing and uh, such that uh, this T n plus 1 is strictly larger than tau. That is where uh, I have I could uh, use the PDF in this format, okay. This is because I have to ensure that I have been conditioned on the fact that there are n counts till time tau, okay. Now, so, we are there like we wanted to define this distribution conditional distribution, we, are, we have this conditional distribution, but the only thing uh, that has thrown extra is we have ended up with this T n plus 1 variable here. But whereas, what we wanted to show did not include T n plus 1 right, it was only it was only talking about joint distribution of n random variable here. Now, how to derive so, I have this joint distribution which is now of n plus 1 random variables. Now, if I want to get a joint distribution of only in the first n variables here, how to get that? So, just integrate this function over what? T n plus 1 and what is the possible values of T n plus 1? Tau to infinity right, it could be any value. So, if you just do that uh, integration, what you will end up is, so if you just do this integration T1, T2 all the way up to Tn given n tau equals to n. So, after doing this integration, what you will end up is e to the power lambda 
लामडा सॉरी लामडा टू पावर टेन इज देयर एनीवे एंड देन विल हैव लामडा पावर टाउ डिवाइडेड बाय प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट एंड टाउ इज इक्वल्स टू एन दिस इज फॉर ऑल जीरो टी वन टी टू ऑल अवे अप टू टी एन and this is left r equals to tau and this is going to be zero otherwise so i have just integrated this function between tau to infinity if you just write like i am just uh, ended up with this function so now if you just look into this function does this function depends on any of these variables here earlier when i have this function at least it dependent on the variable t n plus 1 which was my argument but now after doing this integrating out it is only lambda to the power e to the power lambda t tau and the denominator also is only my condition uh, n tau equals to n now what is this i have a distribution i have a pdf and this is a constant a pdf which takes only constant value it should then what this is it should be kind of uniform distribution right like i have ended up with a distribution which is uniform and if it's a uniform distribution and also we know that a pdf should be such that if you integrate it over its uh, region it should end up what it should indicate what so if that's the case and if it's a uniform distribution or it takes a constant value throughout what should be the value of that uh, P, cdf itself at every point that function itself so okay so let me refresh it so if i have a pdf which is independent of my argument that means at every point it is going to take the same value right like for example in this case you give me any point it is going to take the same value further if i going to integrate this over the entire region it should equals to 1 that means necessarily that at every point this function is nothing but the reciprocal of its area right then only if i am going to integrate and if it is constant then i will end up with a one value so in that case this value should whatever i got here should be reciprocal of the area of the region where this this ordering holds you understand this so so let's imagine for a two dimensional case i am letting tau each one of this to go up to so i have this t1 i have this tau and this is i'm only letting it go till tau tau because both t1 and t2 are random variables or variables which can take at most value tau right now what is the region here where t1 is going to be greater than t2 so like let's say i draw a 45 degree line in all of this region t1 will be greater than t2 or t2 will be greater than t1 t2 is going to be greater than right if i am going to uh, fix this and if i go all the way up at t1 will always so i have this region right 
So, I am just let us focus on this. So, if you just focus on this, what is the area of this bit entire area tau square and now what is the range where t uh, this ordering ok in this case I am interested in t 1 less than t 2 right. So, this and I mean we, uh, uh, we I can ignore this part because that line itself do not have any area uh, the case where t 1 equals to t 2 I will. What is the uh, area of this region that is going to be exactly half right of uh, t square by 2 the, in that case it is going to be tau square by 2. So, similarly if you extend it to n uh, dimension the area where this ordering holds if I am going to test it what that will be any guess tau raise to n divided by n factorial why that should be huh? that is the result ok. Fine, let us take it as a result. Okay. So, then what this what you expect this value to be equal to 1 by that quantity right tau to the power n divided by. So, I we expect this to be equals to reciprocal of that is n factorial t to the power n. Okay. And you see that that is what I have already mentioned here, but this is just like one step of this right like I have to, to show that for each term this is a Poisson random variable. What I have just showed is this conditional distribution satisfies condition on this n tau equals to n is going to be this n factorial by tau to the power n. Now, how to show this that for every tau greater than 1 n tau is a Poisson with rate lambda lambda t. Whatever this relation I have you if I go ahead and manipulate it I am going to get probability that tau n tau equals to n is equals to what? lambda n tau n e to the power lambda t lambda tau divided by n factorial. So, what is this? So, what is this uh, what is this uh, the random variable then n tau? So, I have saying that the probability that this random variable n tau takes value n is expressed in terms of this, but now what this looks similar to or what this exactly is Poisson with what? So, n tau is Poisson. So, I could just write this as lambda tau to the power n and e to the power lambda tau divided by n square right. So, this is my rate and this is Poisson with rate lambda tau and uh, that is exactly our claim here. So, in a way what this uh, third point C point is telling us the Poisson process can also be thought of like an any form random variables a collection of independent uniform random variables where uh, that that n points occurs can be thought of like uh, they are going to happen uniformly in the in the interval uh, tau that is each points I am going to draw that is going to happen uniformly with parameter tau, but uh, I have also this constraint that these points need not be arbitrary they have to be in increasing order right. So, that is uh, tau t 1 has to greater than t 2 like this. So, because of this I have end up with this n factorial term here. Ok, now quickly argue why if this is true this implies that my proce process is Poisson ok. So, now what I need to show if I am going to assume the C property I need to show that all the 
three properties of the if I assume that the sum process is such that it is going to satisfy all it, it is uh, satisfies point C then I have to show that this also satisfies this implies three properties of my Poisson process. Okay. Now, let us let us try to say C equals to A. Suppose I am given this let us say T1, T2, and up to Tk. I am given this Tk variables and also this n numbers n1, n2, all the way up to nk, and then let us say I am going to define n to be n1 plus n2 plus all the way up to nk. So, think of this I have been given as the time count times t1, t2, all the way up to tk. Now, I am going to define and also imagine that this n1, n2, nk are nothing but the number of items you want to put in the interval 0 to t1 is n1 and that between t1 to t2 as n2 like this. So, I have total n items here n1 which is the sum of all these items. Now, I am going to define some p i here, p i is going to be defined as t i minus t i minus 1 divided by t k. So, what is this? Suppose I have let us say t 1 here t 2 here and t 3 is bigger and t 4 is smaller and I have some t 5 here and this is like starting 0. So, p 1 is going to be proportional to this interval, p 2 is going to be proportional to this interval and p 3 is going to be proportional to this like this. So, notice that t i t k is constant that is the total length let us say this is T k. So, this is T k and now for every p i I am just going to take the length of the interval. So, I have basically defined probability p i that is that is proportional to the length of the intervals. P i I will just define now. So, I have just uh, I will I will say what where I am going to use it like p i is I have defined to be a number which is defined like this. You can think this as like a probability term here. So, if you just add it over all i's, it is going to add up to 1, right, between 1 to k here. You have to convince yourself like if I am going to use, assume this c holds and I think that, so just let me write this. So, by C, I am assuming C holds right by C, the distribution of, so what we are saying is if because of this uniform distribution as a interpretation we have from this C point, we can assume that if you are going to define this P i to be probabilities proportional to the interval nth. And if I have n numbers let us say given to me and if I throw this n um, items in onto on this interval, probability that it falls in this interval is going to be proportional to the length of this interval. Okay. So, that is what we are going to now use. So, the distribution the number of counts in each interval is as if each of the n counts thrown into the sub interval at random falling into the ith interval is going to be p i. 
So now, so if we say that we have n items and n i items are going to fall in the ith interval. So, what is this probability is going to be? Like if I have n objects and I throw them, n1 of them go into the first interval, n2 of them go into the second interval and nk of them go into the kth interval. What is that probability is going to be? Like I am choosing each one of the object independently and I am just throwing. Every time I throw, the probability that it is going to fall in the ith interval is pi, which is independent of the other. So, then what is the probability that n i counts go into the ith interval is? It is going to be p 1 into n 1, p 2 into n 2 into p k into n k. So, this is for a given n 1, n 2 all the way up to n k, right? But uh, when I have n total counts, in how many ways I can partition them into n1, n2, all the way up to nk such that their sum is equals to n? I have a multinomial distributions right in this. So, the number of ways. Such that in I counts in the ith interval is simply n choose n one n two all the way up to n k, which is defined as n factorial divided by n one factorial n two factorial all the way up to n k factorial. Right, so I have n things I am indifferent like where the count is happening, I am just like throwing them right, like I am just interested in uh, what, how, how many of them go into the ith interval and then uh, I am just looking at the probabilities in this fashion. So, for a given n1, n2 like this, this is the probability, but right now I do not know how this n, n total n gets split across this right. So, I have this multinomial distribution. Now, finally, how to exploit this now? Now, I have this. So, suppose let us say n t i sorry n t i minus n t i minus 1 is equals to n i. Let us say for all i equals to 1 to n. So, let us compute this probability. I want to compute that okay in the interval between T 1 and uh, let us say T i and uh, T i plus 1 or uh, between T i and uh, T i minus 1. So, this should be i minus 1, there are n i objects okay. This you can write it as n T i n t k equals to n total number of objects and uh, probability that n t i minus n t i minus 1 equals to n i between i to n and k given condition that n t k equals to 
Okay. Now coming back to the C third property again here, from the third property that point C here, we already know that this distribution is what? Probability that N T equals to N. This is a Poisson distributed with threat lambda T k right, that is the uh, length of the interval here. So, this is going to be lambda T k and how many counts till then? There are n counts e to the power lambda T k divided by n factorial and what is this? So, I am basically asking there are n i counts between in this interval and there are n such intervals, right. So, how I am going to do? I am first going to look for a possible realization and then when I know the possible realization I have, this is the probability associated with that. So, I will consider it over all such possibilities, right. From there are these many ways of choosing uh, these, may, these many ways of partitioning this n into n, n 1, n 2 all the way up to n k. When I have this kind of partition, what is the associated probability? The associated probability is p 1 to the power n 1, p 2 to the power n k and all the way up to p 2 to the power k n k. So, if you just replace this guy by its uh, n factorial divided by n 1 n 2 all the way up to n k factorial and further if you replace each of the probabilities as we defined earlier in terms of their intervals that is you will uh, just replace this p i by what? T i minus T i minus 1 divided by T k. If we just replace what we are going to get T equals to i k equals to 1 sorry i equals to 1 to k. Then, so you just verify that I am just directly writing this. Okay. So, what is this now? I am finally able to express this probability here as the product of k probability, k terms here. What is each term here? If you just focus, let us take uh, one particular i here, i is ranging from 1 to k, right? Let us take one particular k. So, if you just look into that, what is this is going to be? So, that is going to be a Poisson with rate lambda T i minus T i minus 1 that is a lambda uh, that is a uh, random variable with Poisson distributed with rate and this is nothing but the probability that that random variable taking what value? N i value and that is exactly this value right for particular i. But now what I have able to write it as, it is now able to write it as all this as a product of all these k values. So, that means what we have done is this probability is nothing but so these are like in increments right. I am able to express these increments as the product probabilities each probability term here corresponds to a Poisson random variable. So, that means it I am already showing that the third part property of the Poisson process that this independent increment. So, each of this random variable corresponds to a Poisson random variable with rate which is going to be proportional to the length of the interval. Further, we have shown that through this product that these 
increments are independent because each one of them I am able to write it as a product fashion, right? So, uh, is it clear that like by expressing this, I have been able to show both second and third properties that is independent increments and that each of these random variables is Poisson distributed with the rate corresponding to lambda times the length of the rate intervals. And uh, the first property that counting process that is obvious, right? Like uh, we are doing a counting and uh, we can just verify the definition of counting process on this. So, with this we are able to show that C implies the three properties of a Poisson process. So, hence C also implies if C holds, then it is clear that my process is a Poisson process. So, any of this characterization you can check and uh, that all implies the same Poisson process. So, okay, let us stop here. If you have any doubts on this, uh, you can ask now.